Investing in shares today can be your gateway to financial freedom. To participate in the stock market, you need to open a CDS and a trading account. Here's a quick guide to help you open these accounts. A CDS account. CDS or Central Depository System account is fully owned and operated by Bursa Malaysia Depository. It keeps a record of the ownership and movement of shares traded on Bursa Malaysia. Simply put, when you buy stocks, shares are credited to your CDS account and when you sell stocks, they are debited from your CDS account. In addition to a CDS account, you also need to open a trading account with a broker. A trading account is used to place your buy or sell orders in the stock market. Let us show you how to open a CDS account and a trading account in three simple steps. Step 1. Access Bursa Malaysia website and choose from any of the licensed stockbrokers listed on the website to open an account. Step 2. Once you have identified your preferred stockbroker, bring along your identity card and your bank documents to the stockbroker's office for verification. Step 3. Look out for a confirmation notice from Bursa Malaysia in your mailbox in the next few days. This mail will provide you with all your account details which you will use every time you trade. If you are new to the market and would like to learn the fundamentals of stock investing, please visit www.bursamarketplace.com. That's it! With these three easy steps, you are ready to start investing in the stock market and move towards achieving your financial freedom. Open your CDS account and trading account today. Happy investing! For the last three decades, Knowledge Center at Bursa has offered technology, resources, services, space and a sense of community. Since 1985, 14,000 titles have been collected with care and attention to high financial literacy standards. In collaboration with a global community of institutions, we ensure access to the world's diverse intellectual and cultural economic heritage, as well as fast online services for connectivity to the financial world. Serving the Bursa Malaysia community and beyond, Knowledge Center at Bursa empowers you in your trading and investment analysis research. Financial information at my fingertips. Visit Knowledge Center at Bursa Malaysia today for the collections, for the services, for the sense of community. Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to this webinar brought to you by Bursa Malaysia and managed by our company, Life Chant. So today's topic is very exciting. This is because we get to learn on how to draw trend lines. And also our speaker today, Ms. Pauling Yong, will, uh, will teach us on how to master in drawing the support and also resistance lines, and also how to apply it on the chart patterns. So before we started, I would like to read the disclaimer first. So today, we sh whatever we share on this webinar is only for educational purpose. We will never give any sell and buy recommendations to any company. 
whatever we discuss here is for case study and also educational purpose only. So if you decide to do any investment, it is 100% your in investment risk. So now allow me to um, introduce our beautiful speaker today, which is Ms. Pauling Yong. Ms. Pauling Yong is a CEO of the Sigma Wealth Syndrome Berhad, and she is also a licensed and experienced financial planner who is certified by Malaysian Securities Commission Financial Planner Representative License and also Bank Negara Financial Advisor Representative License. So Ms. Pauline is also a course trainer and also public speaker for FPAM and also a Bursa Malaysia. Over 25 years in education, she has also have around 50,000 students and conducted over 200 large scale corporate courses. So other than that, she's a professional financial planner and also a publisher. So hi, Ms. Pauline Yong. Good, How thank are you, you? Good, good, I'm good, thank you. Um, so you are uh, ready to begin? <laughs> yes, yes, thank you. Um, thank you, Shaz, and good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the webinar. And uh, my name is Pauline Yong. I'm a licensed financial planner, and I'm also a certified chartist. Uh, good evening, everyone. So today, uh, allow me to share my um, screen first. So this is my PowerPoint. So I have here with me uh, uh, a lot of people who, who are very interested in uh, technical analysis. So may I have a show of hand here in the room? Um, how many of you have uh, just started um, investing? in the stock market and um, you may type in the chat how many of you have just started ah i see so when you just started um are you using hi good evening good evening um are you using technical analysis or you haven't started uh, technical analysis yet are you using technical analysis Okay, so for those of you who just started, um, yes, I see that Christine say yes, and uh, a, a number of you say yes using TA. That's very good. Technical analysis, very, very good. And some say using market intelligence. Wow, um, that's fantastic. Okay, so um, although you have just started, um, TA is more powerful, yeah. So I can see that many of you agree that tech Technical analysis is a very, very powerful tool. So that is why today I'm going to share with you my secrets. <laughs> okay, my secrets of drawing the trend line. So definitely you will learn something from today's session. Okay, so and, and it will be some of the secrets is something that you cannot learn from anywhere else. So yes, TA is an art or it's a science. Okay, somebody asked. TA, technical analysis is both art and science, because there is a science. Later, I'll go through some of the theory part and the principle. So the principle part, we have to understand. So those are the uh, science, OK? Then, however, there is also some art on it. So that means that you are looking at uh, different ways of interpreting it. So for me, I have my ways of interpreting it. And then over the years, I developed my my way of um, drawing the, the trend line as well. So I can share with you and then um, it's uh, definitely open for um, sharing, okay? So you can also share with me how you draw your trend line and I can share with you how I draw my trend line. Okay, thank you, thank you so much. Okay, yes, I am a trader as well. <laughs> Both an investor and a trader, yes. Okay, so here, However, my way of um, using the technical analysis can be both for investment purpose and can be for trading as well. So it is not 100% purely for trading. So using the technical analysis, you can have a lot of function. We can also in, um, apply into a unit trust, look at the trend and then look at the any trend as well. So um, you can apply technical analysis into any financial markets, okay? So not necessarily has to be trading and then we are actually open to many, many area. Okay, so today's session, we're gonna um, look at the definitions of a trend. What is a trend? Because we all know that trend is our friend and learn the different types of trends across different time frame. 
Okay, because when we are investing, the very, very first question you need to ask yourself is, what is your time frame? Okay, without having that time frame concept in, in the first place, you cannot do investment or you cannot do trading. Okay, the time frame is important. Then master the art of drawing the support and resistance lines and the application on the chart pattern and learn how to draw trend lines using the moving average. Okay, so some interesting word here, moving average. Huh? So, and uh, some case studies. So along when I explain, I will um, show examples already. Okay, so the examples is not until the end of it, it's uh, along the way. Okay, so trend is your friend. Okay, so um, whether you are long-term investors or you are, traders, short-term speculators, you have to know that trend is your friend, okay? So in fact, um, when we invest, um, a lot of time when we do not, before we learn about technical analysis, and I'm sure some of you here who have not um, learned about technical analysis before. So if you have no idea about technical analysis, right, when you started trading or investing, you will have, no idea what will be the price direction. For example, you buy into a share. And when you buy into a share, right, since you do not have that TA background, so you probably will not know um, what will be the direction, whether the price uh, will be going up or going down or going sideways, okay? So, so by knowing the trend, you can able to identify that. Yes, trend is our friend until it bends. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so when it bends, then it is on the reverse, all right. So first, um, I will give you some theories and then as well some practicals. So we, we will learn both, okay, theories and practicals. And um, trend line is a line drawn over a pivot highs and a pivot lows to show the prevailing di direction. So one simple definition is higher high and higher high and higher low, okay? So whenever you see a higher high and higher low, so this one, I'm drawing a trend line here. Okay, so when you see higher high, okay, this high is higher than this high, right? Then, and then when it retraces, and then it go up again. So this low is higher than the low here. So when you see higher high and higher low, then we can see that it is a uptrend, okay? So the definition is very simple for an uptrend, higher high and higher low, okay? Higher high and higher low. How about a downtrend, okay? So when you draw a downtrend, so you know that the, the high here is lower than the previous high. So here we are looking at lower high and a, lower low, okay? Lower high and a lower low. So lower high and a lower low. So this one will be a downtrend. So the definition is very, very simple, okay? And of course you can also draw a horizontal trend and this will be moving sideways. So which, which one would you want to trade? Let's say you want to trade, okay? Can, can anybody tell me which one you want to trade? You want to trade in the up one, up wave, the sideways or the down one? Okay, which one you want to trade? Okay, I see some answers here. I see up, up, many people say up. Can anybody say otherwise? Mm. Uh, this question, uh, actually I the questions can be any time because um, I, I believe when I say something, um, you have some doubt and then you want to ask and then I can address to you and then that can solve your problem easier rather than you have to wait until the end of the session, then you may forgot what was the, the beginning part. So as you have problem, you just type it up, okay? Then uh, I just look at the, 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 the questions will do. Okay. Um, okay, some interesting, some say, uh, many people say up, and then say, one say either one up or down. Okay, good. So you have either uptrend or downtrend, okay? And then um, some say both and um, any entry when, okay? 
so asking when to enter. So when to enter, you can enter either up or down trend. And uh, let me see anybody say sideways. Sideways for waiting to trade. Oh, okay, so when you are on the sideways, you are waiting for the opportunity. Okay, okay. so actually um, consolidation. Okay, so actually there is no right or wrong. It's just your personal preference. I'm going to show you something. Okay. So here, I'm going to show you different types of a trend. So here we are looking for, uh, let's say we are looking for this trend. Okay. Can anybody tell me what trend is this? Up or down or horizontal? This trend. Okay, very good. So this one is an uptrend. Now for an uptrend, let me draw my trend liner. Okay. So how you draw the trend line is that you have to connect the, when it is uptrend, you connect the bottom here. Okay. So let's draw. So here I'm using this um, tradingview.com. So if you if I can share with you, I will share with you in the chat here so that you can um, click and then you can look at the chart. Okay, so here is a tradingview.com and um, let's draw the trend. So here you are looking at the uptrend. Okay, so first the bottom here, the bottom here, you can connect the trend and then become an uptrend, correct? And uh, it takes minimum two point. Okay, one point here, one point here, two point. Actually, I have more than that. One, two, three, four, four points here. Okay, so anything more than two points to connect one um, trend line, it's a valid trend line. You cannot connect with one point. You have to have two points, okay? Then another thing is, if you look at it, uh, if let's say I want to trade this stock, okay, it's an uptrend stock, I want to trade, let's say. So first, I will have to, draw a, a major uptrend to show that it is an, on an uptrend. Then you see, I can start to connect the top here and then I wait for a breakout. So here, finally, I saw a breakout. Okay, then I start to draw trend line. Okay, see how, I, how fast I can draw the trend line? I can, I can draw um, the trend line as if that it is a very, very, um, very, very, fast. You don't have to think so much. Okay, let me move this thing away so that I can draw better. Okay, you see how I draw the trend line. Uh, the tails, usually I will exclude the tails because sometimes you have the candlestick with the tail. So I will exclude the tail. So I just draw the body. Now, if you do look at this um, trend line, you see for a beginner, you may think that, wow, so messy. The lines are very, very messy. Okay. However, if you to follow what I say just now, you connect the two points and then you draw. Okay, you draw, draw, draw. You connect the bottom here and then you draw. You connect the top here, you draw down. Connect the bottom here, you draw up. And then connect the top here, you draw down. When you draw a down trend line, you connect the top. When you draw an up trend line, you connect the bottom. Okay, so this one, I move this a little bit. Okay, then this one bottom connect and then top connect, bottom connect, top connect. Okay, if do I make money? Okay, I buy here, I sell here, I make money. Okay, how much money do I make? Let's say, let's say I buy here 250 and I sell here 330, so I make 80 cents. Then I buy here again 316 and I sell here 3. Three nine, so I made twenty cents. Let's say I buy here, three ringgit, and I sell here, three thirty. So I made thirty cents here. Let's say I buy here, three two nine, and then I sell here, and three six. Uh, here is um three two eight, and then here is two three seven zero. So it's about uh forty. 40 cents, and then I also make money here. It's three sixty eight, and then here is. 379 so I make 10 cents so each of these trade I make money on an uptrend okay by drawing the trend line how about 
Okay, let's let's now somebody say downtrend because um in our Busan Malaysia it will be very tricky to short selling, right? So usually we will just buy low and sell high. Okay, so we buy low and sell high. So can we make money in the downtrend? Let's say we buy low and sell high. What do you think? Can we make money in the downtrend? Hello, <laughs> can <laughs> yes. Okay, yeah. Uh, best to include the tail. Okay, do you differentiate between the major trend line, minor trend line? Mm. Okay, later I will talk about the Jason. You hold on to the question. Um, Jason asked whether we can differentiate between the major trend line and the uh, shorter trend line. Yes, we can do that later when I bring in the moving average. Then I'll let you know. Okay. So now, uh, I just do a, a quick overview like uh, whether we can make money or not in the uptrend in the downtrend in in the horizontal trend whether we can make money or not that's the most important thing after all why do we want to learn about technical analysis right okay all right ah uh, okay so now we only um so some people quite skeptical in the downtrend uh, whether we can make money okay let's say this one is a downtrend Okay, so let's see. Yeah. Uh, okay, so here is a downtrend. Okay, and uh, this one you can connect because um, I only look at one year. Okay, so let's say I'm looking at a very short term period, which is about one within two years time, from last year May until this year. Okay, we I just want to look at whether let's say this year, whether this year I can make money or not downtrend. Okay, so here let's say I buy in. November last year, okay? Then I sell here. So here I buy at around 10.24 and then I sell at around 10.80. So I make about 60 cents. Okay, let's draw. Here I buy at 9.95 and then I sell at this gap down here at 10.38. So 10.38, 9.95, 40 cents. I make 40 cents, okay. Let's say I buy at this 9.80 and then I sell at um, 10.25. So 45 cents, I make 45 cents. So can you see that although I'm in the downtrend, okay, this, this whole thing is a downtrend. Okay, one trick, why do you know it is a downtrend? You look at the 200 day moving average. Do you see this line as a 200 day moving average? So this shows that it is a downtrend. Okay, so later I will explain more about this uh, moving average. Huh? I just uh, show it to you first. And um, so it is a downtrend. Okay, for sure it is a downtrend. So, but can I make money? Yes, I can. I can make money in a downtrend when I just buy low and sell high. And, uh, and when I just simply draw the trend line, okay? How about horizontal trend? Now, this one is a horizontal trend. Oh, still confused how the trend line is drawn. Okay, 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 I go slow a bit now. Huh? So, okay, so this one, uh, horizontal trend, can you make money? Yes or no? Can make money in the horizontal trend? Yes, can. Okay, let's see. Huh? Let's see. Okay, how I draw the trend line top here. Sometimes uh, extreme top, I will exclude. I will just follow this top and then this top and then I will just draw a trend line like this. Okay. Later, I will, as I go along, I will teach you uh, a better way of drawing the trend line using the moving average. Okay, because um, sometimes as a new person, you may not know how to um, draw the trend line well. So then I will teach you how to incorporate the moving average so that you can follow the moving average line and then draw nicely. Okay, draw very, very nicely. Mm. Then this one down. And then you see how I draw. Because I am very, very used to drawing the trend line. I draw trend line every day on a daily basis. So it's like automated, automatic, um, you know, it's like automatic kind of an operation for me. So when I see that, I straight away can draw. So 
um, how do you achieve this? You have to practice. Practice make perfect. Um, you, every time, every day, you just have to look at the chart and then just draw the trend line. So if one day you can draw the trend line as fast as I can, then that means you are able to draw a, a, a quick and a good trend line. Because sometimes, just like when you are driving, when you learn how to drive, basically when you start learning how to drive, you do not know how to go about this, the, the driving because it's like everything is new to you. Just like this technical analysis, it's a new skill. So everything is new to you. So in order to make yourself very, very familiar of this new skill, the only way is to keep practicing, okay? So this one, you have to keep practicing. And then beginning, you may want to use the moving average. Okay, but let us look at this, whether we can um, make money or not. Here we buy here, okay? We buy at um, eight ringgit, 809, and then we sell at 810, uh, no, 832, um, 832. So, this one make about 10, 20 cents. Then here we buy at 810 and then we sell at 827. We make about 17 cents. We make less uh, because it is a horizontal range. So we make less money. Here we buy at 810 and then we sell at 822. We make 10 cents. Here we buy at 810 and then we sell at 820. Make another 10 cents. Here, this one is um, 806, and then we sell at um, 809. So this one break even, okay? So when you are in a horizontal trend, you make little money. So do you see that it pays for you to go for an uptrend? Because when you are in an uptrend, okay, you make more money by, by trading an uptrend stock. Okay, it's not that you cannot make money, you can less money. Okay, and, and uh, that will incur a lot of uh, brokerage charges. And this one downtrend, you can still make money as well. And uh, looks like this downtrend because of the price volatility, you can make more money than the, this horizontal trend. So what I want to say is that if you were to able to draw the trend line well, Okay, you can identify the buying, when to buy and when to sell. Okay, so um, when we buy, okay, the what is the time range? Oh, this all these are daily charts. So what I'm using are all daily charts. Okay, do you draw the lines based on daily? Mm, it's a daily time frame because um, for daily time frame is the most important time frame because we are looking at the um, stock market on a daily basis. And also, if let's say, even if you are on an intraday, intraday, of course, you will look into the minute chart and the hourly chart. But the thing is that you still have to refer back to the daily chart to look at the bigger trend, okay, the bigger view. So this daily chart is an uh, important um, concept, okay? Okay, later I will... I will come back to here again. Uh, let let go through some of the theory stuff, okay? So the theory stuff, I still have to go through, okay? So um, so then you can see that uptrend is formed by all the bottom. When you have an uptrend, you form all this bottom and the bottom, and then you draw uptrend line. And then when you are on the downtrend line, you form the top and the top, and then you draw the downtrend line. So now you see how I draw, okay? Uptrend, downtrend, uptrend, downtrend, horizontal trend, horizontal trend, okay? Mm. Yeah. So trend line um, can uh, be used as support or resistance. And they show direction and the speed of the price. And the longer the trend line, the more significant it is. Okay. So first, trend lines can be used as a support or resistance. And they can show the direction and the speed. And then the longer the trend line, the more significant it is. There are three points here. So first of all, support and resistance. Okay. Support and resistance. When, when we are looking at technical analysis, um, 
the whole thing about technical analysis, I can say is about support and resistance. If I were to summarize, now, if I were to summarize everything about TA, what is TA? Okay, TA is support and resistance. So if you were to look at this sentence, it means that whenever you are involved in um, trading based on the technical analysis, you are always constantly looking for where is my support? Where is my resistance? You have to do that, okay? Always constantly looking for support and resistance. So for example, okay, you look at this, okay? So if let's say I clear out everything, you look at this, it's like very random, okay? So let's say you see, oh, it's all the random thing. Okay, you, I have this top here, then the low here, the top here and all this. So it is very, very um, like a messy. You don't know how to organize your chart, okay? So sometimes um, when you see something um, not familiar to you and then you want to make it very systematic and organized, then you want to set a few rules. So rules are for you to make yourself um, easy to make things um, systematic for you and then to see things uh, more clearly for you. So then my rules are three rules. Okay, when I draw the trend lines, I have three rules. Three types of trend lines. Number one, the horizontal support and resistance line. Number two, the trend line, which is the 45 degree line that you saw which is up, down, up, down, that trend line. And number three, moving averages. So I repeat, the three important ingredients of drawing the trend lines are horizontal support and resistance line, the 45 degree trend line, and the moving average. Okay, so when um, the whole topic on today's session is the art of drawing trend line. So then I have to say that the art of drawing trend line is to uh, incorporate these three secrets, okay? So many people, they do not know. So these three secrets are horizontal support and resistance. So I show you the horizontal line how to draw the horizontal line. So do you see that there is a swing high and swing low, swing high, swing low, swing high and swing low. Okay, so all these are swing high and swing low. So when you want to draw the horizontal and uh, support trend line, first you have to zoom out. Okay, you have to see a, a mega big picture. Zoom out. Okay, zoom out. And then you can see that this is a, a, like a 10 year kind of a chart. Then you start to look left and right. Okay, look left and right because this chart is big, right? So you have to look carefully. So top, identify the top and then you click. Okay, because this one is drawing the horizontal trend line. So I'm going to draw whenever I see a major top and the swing high and a swing low. Okay, I will look and then see whether this line is reacting well with the rest. And then I will draw as well. So here I see that I have one point here and then one point here. Here I see that there are a few points here because this is the neckline here. And then it also becomes a neckline here. And then I will also look at here, I see some um, neckline here, I can also draw some line. And this neckline is also the top of that later development, okay? Then I see that there is some um, price action here, some support here, and then some height here, some height here, so I can draw this trend line here as well. So I am able to draw some nice horizontal trend line and these are all support and resistance trend line okay so these are all support and resistance trend line and um, you can see that they are moving nicely okay they are moving nicely and this will give you a backdrop 
Okay, maybe you can change the color a little bit. So maybe this color is um, very, very obvious. So maybe you can make it very subtle and then you change the color to a more subtle color so that it acts as a background, backdrop. Okay, to, so that it reminds you that, oh, I have this, um, this line here and uh, it was a supporting line here, but then it become like a resistance line here now. So when I, when I want to trade, I know that, oh, these are the, the um, supporting trend line that um, in the past it was reacting well and then now it should be reacting well as well. So then this give me an idea where is the support and resistance. Okay, so all this horizontal trend line. Okay, then this is the first step. Huh? The next step, second step, you bring out two moving averages, 20 day and the 200 day moving average. Okay, so I bring out my 200 day moving average and I bring out my 20 day moving average. So when I look at this, I know that my long term supporting trend line is around that 200 day moving average. And my short term, medium term is more or less coincide with that 20 day moving average. So I have my major trend line like this. Then I can start to draw my trend line. So for people who are new in this TA, after you have seen the moving average, right? Then you can use this moving average line to help you, to guide you, to draw the trend line more accurately. Okay, so for example, I see that this one is my 200 long-term trend line that is from 20, 2011 until 2013. So it's about three year kind of a trend line. I can draw like this, okay? I can draw like this that coincide with my 200 day moving average line. I can coincide. So I touch here, touch here, touch here and here. So it's a valid trend line here. Okay, so I'm drawing this trend line because it is um, coincide or it this um, showing that 200 day moving average trend line is some um, coincide with this long term trend line. So this is my long term trend line. It's a three year trend line. Then I see that there is line here, right? So I can draw one down line here as well. So this one touching here and touching here as well. So here it gives me a nice diagram like that. And now I can draw like this and I can draw like this and I can draw like this. Okay, so what we are drawing is major trend line. So when we look at 10 year chart, then we need to draw the major trend line to see an overall view first. Are we in a long term bullish trend or long term bearish trend? So if we are below the 200 day moving average line, most likely we are on the long term bearish trend. Okay, so here we are currently at the long term bearish trend here because we just cross out of here. But however, here we are horizontal. So moving some, giving some time and then it will break above that 200 day moving average. So here you have three secrets here. First, you draw the horizontal supporting trend line and resistance. Okay, so that is the first step. Number two, you bring out the moving average. So you bring out that 20 day, you bring out that 200 day so that you can draw a major trend first. Later, we can zoom in for the one year chart and then we can start to draw the 20 day moving average trend line. Okay. Then thirdly, then only you start to draw the 45 degree trend line. So these are all 45 degree trend line. Okay, so here we can also zoom in. Let's say we zoom in. Okay. Okay, we zoom in here. And then we want to draw the shorter trend line, which is coincide with the 20 day moving average. You see, 20 day moving average. So we can also draw the 20 day moving average nicely as well. You see? And this one, after you draw, you see that it is horizontal. So you know that it is horizontal and you can draw something like this. Okay, and like that, like this, and 
okay, looking at the possible breakout here. So we can use the moving average. As you can see, we can use the moving average to help us to draw a, a, a better or nicer trend line so that when the price break above two lines, the 20 day moving average and the trend line, the white color trend line together, okay, if they were to break these two lines together, then it will be more powerful. So the breakout will be more impactful. And if let's say the three lines are together, if let's say you break above all the three lines together, 20 day, 200 day, and the white color trend line, this three line break all break together, then this upward breakout will be more powerful. And then the chances of a, a valid breakout is, is genuine. Okay, so it depends on how many lines you break up because sometimes you can only break up one trend line, but the white color trend line is still not break up yet. Okay, then sometimes uh, you, yeah. So if let's say you just see that, oh, I just break up one trend line, the 20 day only, but the, the 45 degree haven't, so you just wait. Or sometimes you say, okay, just break the 20 day first. The 200 day is somewhere near there, but then haven't break that. So then maybe you say, okay, I want to wait until it break that 200 day moving average. Okay, so all this, all these are helping you for your investment or your trading decision. Okay, so you have to use all this information. Not necessarily you just use the trend line, you have to use all kinds of information to help you. Okay. Um, somebody asked, okay. Can we draw trend line on indicator for entry? Yes, we can draw trend line on indicator. Okay, later I answer you back this question. And then will the session be recorded? It will be recorded at the live. It is a YouTube live. So it will be in the YouTube channel for um, live champ YouTube channel. Okay, so you can refer to live champ YouTube channel. And um, Jason asked, so this one I answered already. So how to define the pivot high or low? Ah, swing high or swing low? Yes. So pivot high, pivot low is the same as swing high and swing low. Okay, so Jason is the same. Swing high, swing low, pivot high, pivot low, they are the same. On the high side, it's always easy to say <coughs> buy low and sell high. But in the actual, how to see accurately next can either go up or down. Yeah, you are right. So usually you can't see, right? Because you say, oh, on the high side, oh, so easy. But actually, okay, I can tell you. And that is why I you need all this um, horizontal trend line and the 20 day and the 200 moving average to guide you so that you can draw your trend line more accurately. Okay, so because sometimes uh, without these tools to help you, you may not be able to draw um, uh, nicely. And then, um, hi Pauline, which time frame is suitable to use um, when drawing trend line? Thanks. Okay, which time frame? Day daily chart. Daily chart um, is the best. Okay. Uh, may I know if it's possible how to see resistance for all time high stop resistance? All time high, no resistance. The sky is a limit. The only resistance you have to use a Fibonacci extension. Okay, so go. Um, if you are looking for historical high and then it go higher and higher, right? So the sky is the limit. Okay, there is nothing for you to. There's no resistance line up there in the sky, right? So then, how do you um track where will be the target? So you go for the Fibonacci extension. Okay, and if you want to talk about uh, Fibonacci, I think my previous um, uh, YouTube, I mean, uh, webinar, Busa webinar have that answer for you. Okay, so Edwin's question, I will come back to you later. So, okay, let's see the chat here. Um, buy low, sell high, buy low, sell high, but how do you know where is the low? <laughs> okay, good question. So Jane, um, the low is the breakout point. You see, you may never, when you use this breakout point, right? One thing is that you may never spot at the low, lowest point. You may never, 
you can only buy at the breakout. So meaning that whenever you buy, it is not the lowest point. It is the breakout point. Okay, so you have to identify that. So you have to, um, I have to clarify that when you use the trend line method, it is not the bottom. It is not the lowest point. Okay, it is the breakout point. Okay. Mm. <laughs> okay, so uh, Fai say, do you prefer tail or body as a pivot point for trend line? I prefer the body because the tail can be an extreme because of emotion, okay? It can be extreme. So I prefer the, the body of the candlestick, okay? But it's also, it's sometimes I will use the tail. So it depends also. So it, it's very hard to answer whether straightly uh, I use the uh, body or the tail because um, sometimes I do use the tail. So it depends on the situation. Mm, okay, so, um, okay, so Larry asked, Pauline, for minor trend line, why does um, some of the line you connect the highs and the low is uh, in one trend? For minor trend line, ah, okay. Because um, because trend line, there is a many time frame, right? So you have a long, long trend line time frame, and then you have the uh, months, and then you have the days and the hourly. So um, you can also draw some minute minute trend line as well. So for example here, okay, um, good, good observation. Minute, these are all minute. Okay, so it's all minute. So you can draw minute trend line as well. So you can do that as well. But I can tell you the minute trend line, we will be crazy over it because the price is too volatile. So you won't be able to catch the, the bigger picture. So what I like to see is a big picture. Once you see a big picture, then you zoom in, okay? Don't be um, uh, like, a, you'll be confused or your emotion or rather your emotion will be affected by the minute trend usually, okay? So, so that's why when you are too affected, your, it, with the minute when you see that, wow, oh, you're lost already, I'm lost already, I do not know what is the trend now. Okay, the minute when you see that you are lost because you focus too much for the minor trend, so then you have to zoom out, okay? You zoom out and then you start to draw a bigger trend, okay? Make yourself fresh again. So you will have to erase everything, make yourself totally fresh again, and then you start to draw the major trend line. Then only you start to look at the, from outside to the small, okay? So, so from top, the, uh, top to the bottom, so that you can see better. Otherwise you get, very, very uh, emotionally affect because you see the price keep on up and down, up and down, your 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 heartbeat is also pumping up and down, up and down. Okay. Um, okay, um, triangle, yes, later. Could you explain which situation you use tail? Okay, um, actually it's very difficult to explain because sometimes I look at the overall chart pattern and then if I see that um, sometimes the tail is not too um, tall and then, um, but however, it is um, like a, um, the tail is touching the previous uh, support and resistance line. So for example, if let's say this line, uh, okay, there's some tail here. So if they say this tail uh, is also touching the previous swing high or swing low, then I may use this tail because I want to um, sing with the previous um, swing high and swing low as well. So that's why sometimes occasionally I will use the tail as well. Okay, and um, in the major trend line, why sometimes you connect two or three peaks and sometimes you connect two or three troll. Ah, that's because I'm drawing downtrend line or uptrend line. So Henry, if let's say I'm drawing an uptrend line, I connect the bottom, okay, I connect the troll. And then if let's say I am drawing the downtrend line, okay, downtrend line, I connect the top here, okay? Then, um, okay, mm. so, Okay, let me go back to the theory first. Huh? <laughs> I need to cover some of the theory part first. Okay. Okay, let me. Okay, so you can see that um, the support and resistance is so important because it will give you uh, like a backdrop 
um, support and resistance, but then it is subtle and yet it is like impacting the, the price action, okay? Because sometimes if you didn't draw this support and resistance, that the previous um, major swing high or swing low, and then it will have some relation to the current situation. And then if you didn't do that, sometimes you see that, hey, everything is nice. I see that it's supposed to break up, but how come the price reverses? Uh, that is because there is this inherent resistance at the backdrop there. Okay. And then um, all this trend line will show the direction and the speed of the price. So because if let's say you are drawing a very steep trend line, Okay, if let's say this is a very, very steep trend line because it run up too, too steep. So then this tell you that this current trend is a very, very bullish momentum trend because it's very, very steep. It is more than 45 degree, let's say. And a normal trend should be around 45 degree. Okay, and a very, very weak trend will be around like this. Okay, but about 25 or 30 degree. So we are looking different gradient, okay? When you draw the trend line, you look at their gradient, okay? You know what's a gradient? The gradient is the, the, the degree, the angle of the ascending, the angle, okay? So the angle is also depending on each of the candlestick, okay? How tall are the candlestick? So usually when you have a huge price action, then the gradient will be much steeper. Okay, and of course, the longer the trend line, the more significant it is. If let's say you saw how I draw the trend line, 10 year chart. So I draw like a three year chart, three year downtrend, three year uptrend, three year downtrend. So this kind of a long term trend line, it is very, very significant. Once it is broken, the effect will be very, very um, impactful. Okay, so however, if let's say you are drawing a But what happened if you violated a three years trend line? If you violated two months, maybe six months, four months. So so that is why um, when it talk about the, uh, the trend line, the longer the trend line, the more significant it is, okay? Okay, so supply and resistance. So this one, you know already, huh? Validation, two or more points, validate, okay? If you get three points, good. Four points, better. Um, the trend line significant, okay? Sometimes, given a horizontal trend, the price keep on testing the horizontal trend line here. Let's say um, Maybank, eight ringgit. Okay. So every time it touches eight ringgit, it rebounds. Every time it touches eight ringgit, it rebounds. Touches eight ringgit, it rebounds. Okay. So it is always very, very often, then this eight ringgit become a very, very important trend line. So if this were to violate, then the effect will be also impactful. Okay, so this one we have to take note. And the time frame. Of course, the longer the trend line, the more significant it is. Okay. And the angles, the more steep it is, the more powerful it is. And however, also more um, not sustainable because because it is so steep, so maybe it may not continue forever. So such a steep level, it will um, correction, and then, then it will go on to a more gentle slope. Okay, and the gentle slope will be uh, uh, more sustainable. Okay, sometimes we can draw channel line as well. So channel line is when you see that um, you connect the bottom here, and then you connect the top here. Okay, so then you see that the price seems to move along well within that channel. And here you can also draw a channel line here, and then you can see that it seems to move along well within the channel. Okay, so, so this channel line, it is also useful because you can see where the price is moving. Okay. 
and okay so then trend line breaks so when we draw the trend line the 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 purpose of drawing the trend line is to see a a, a breakout okay a, a trend line breaks so how do you validate or confirm that it is a true genuine break so in order to confirm whether it is a true or genuine break there is some rules here so first it is a price filter rules. So it's about two to 3% of the price. So if let's say um, if the price is eight ringgit and then the 3% of that eight ringgit will be eight times 0.03 will be about 24 cents. So if the price drop below um, seven, uh, seven, six, then it will be a, a true breakout. Okay, so that's one way of confirming. Another way is looking at the time, okay. Using the time, I usually count the candlestick, three bars, okay. If it's a daily chart, three days. If it's an hourly chart, three hours. If it's a minute chart, three minutes, okay. So looking at the bars, okay, the, the, the candlestick bars. And also, there is also another third way. The third way is the... Um, for example, when you see there's a trend line break, okay, it break here, then you have to see the rebounds here. Okay, if the rebounds cannot pass this trend line and then it reverses, it's confirmation. Okay, so this is a confirmation when it reverses, when there is a rejection from that trend line. Okay. So here is a way of drawing the horizontal support and resistance. Okay, horizontal support and resistance. You see the top, you draw, see the top here, the top here, and then the bottom here, you draw. So whenever you see a lot of um, reaction, then this one become a very, very important support and resistance. Now, interesting, uh, because I've been um, teaching um, technical analysis for many, many years. So this chart was 2011. <laughs> it was a long time, about 11 uh, uh, 10 years ago. So it was, uh, so I, I use the same chart because I want to show you that this 1520 for our KLCI is still a very, very valid, very, very, very important support and resistance trend line, horizontal trend line. It's a very, very important. You see, back in uh, 2011, it was already always reacting well with the 1520. Until now, we are still, you know, reacting well with that 1520. So that shows that 10 years ago, 10 years later, it is still significant. Okay. Okay. So general rules, support and resistance. The more of a security that changes hands at a particular level, the more significant that it is likely to be a support and resistance zone. Because you see, it is always reacting here, reacting, reacting, reacting. So then because of this, people always act on this. So then this become a very, very important zone, support and resistance zone. Okay, and also psychologically, people will always remember this. Oh, 1520, 1520, you know, because people always see that it is reacting um, from this level, okay? Okay, so, and this, all these rules are from this book by Martin Prink, Technical Analysis Explained. So if let's say for any new beginners, you want to learn about technical analysis, this book I recommend, written by Martin Prink. Okay, it's the, I think it's the most established um, textbook, technical analysis textbook for um, any new beginners, okay? So you can see. So this one, I got it from there. So the general rules. So the greater the speed of the preceding price movement, the more significant a support or resistance. So this one is actually um, same as what I told you just now, whereby you are looking at the speed of the angle. So when you see that the price is full of momentum, so then you know that this um, price action is a uh, very powerful and then most likely it will break any form of a, if there is a, a resistance, uh, it will break it, okay? Because it is a very, very powerful price action. And um, if let's say, 
Okay, maybe later there's another slide I'll explain that. Okay, so the more times a support or resistance zone has been able to reverse a price trend, then it will be a very significant, just like the 1520. Okay, and once a support and resistance zone has been violated, it becomes the resistance zone. So if support zone violated, it becomes a resistance zone. So if let's say you are going um, higher and then you every time you break the higher uh, resistance zone, then this zone becomes a support. You see, it becomes a support, then I can go higher. And then this one becomes a support, then I can go higher. You see how it works, okay? So, so this, this is a concept. And uh, the longer the period that has elapsed, the less significant it is. So sometimes um, you look at a 30, 20 years chart, maybe the time frame was too long. And maybe 20 years ago, uh, 800 point was a very significant level, but now, 800 points, we, we can't even touch that 800 point. You get what I mean? So sometimes when it is too far, uh, it may not be so significant, okay? Okay, so let's draw, um, okay, mentally you draw, okay? Uh, you can't draw on my screen here. So mentally you draw. Draw the support and resistance, okay? How do you draw this one, support and resistance? Can anybody tell me how you draw? Okay, what price level? What price level you draw? Okay, 185, 1.85. Okay, so around here. Oops, <laughs> a bit uh, slanting. Okay, yes. What about top? 2.20, okay, 2.0 here. Okay, it is one. Okay, good. You have spot one. Very good. And two point, this one, 2.2 .2 here. Okay, because one point here, one point here. So this level. And of course you have the top here, the major top. Okay, so this is how you can draw. Very, very good, well done. And, um, okay. Uh, Okay, do you consider the volume? Okay, so no, the volume, no, because when I draw this support and resistance is purely the price action. The volume is only when you are looking at the, um, when you are trading, and then when you, when you want to see whether this uptrend is supported by the volume, uh, then you, you want to see that volume. But if, let's say we just draw the horizontal support and resistance, I don't look at the volume, okay? And even when you draw the trend line, no need to look at the volume as well, okay? Okay, then, okay, here, how do you look at the price? Which price? Where? Seven points, this seven point two, right? Okay, good. 7.2, oops, I think it's 7.3 around there. Okay, then another one, seven point, uh, seven point eight. yeah, that's right. I see wrongly, so it's 7.8. Point eight, yeah, sorry, 7.8. And then another one is 10, very good. And um, yeah, fantastic, 7.2 and 12 also, very, very good. Okay, so these are the major one. And of course we have the lower one here, okay. Would the line chart Oh no, not the line chart. I mean, um, I just use the line chart, but actually you can use a candlestick, okay? No, um, I just use for example, uh, because um, some new people, they may not be able to grasp the candlestick. So that's why I use a line chart, but actually you have to use a candlestick, okay? So here also looking at the, here, okay? The top part here, correct? And then the middle here, you have one, 5.30, 5.40, yeah, that's, that's about there. Okay, so you see one here. Okay, then you see another one here. Okay, very good. Mm. Okay, well done. So here, I'm using the moving average. So this one I have mentioned just now. So the moving average is for you to draw the trend line. So this one is more like a medium term trend line that can allow you, this is a horizontal trend. So you can draw horizontal trend line here. 
and then waiting for a breakout and then you can draw a trend line here and then you can draw a trend line here you can draw a trend line okay so here maybe you can draw like this then like this and then a bit of a not very straight because I do not have a ruler okay why not use SMA? SMA is a simple moving average. Ah, this is a simple moving average. So moving average is also called the simple moving average. It's the same. When to use a price chart uh, as a log chart? Uh, we just use a normal price chart, okay? Log chart is when you want to analyze like 20 years or 30 years or 100 years kind of a chart, then you use a logarithm chart because logarithm chart will, will like, for example, Dow Jones, how can you use a normal chart? Because you start from 100 points to, you know, 30,000 points. So, so um, unless you, you are analyzing like 100 years, then you need a logarithm chart. Mm, can we use a Bollinger Band? Okay, Bollinger Band you can use. But for me personally, I prefer simple moving average line. So these are very simple, simple moving average line. So it's easy to to use okay um front can always use as simple uh front can always use as a sample chart ah okay you also see that i like to use front can as my sample chart yeah okay because it is a fast moving um chart whereby i can demonstrate uh the uptrend better okay mm, no I don't use a point and figure because for point and figure is that there is no, um, not all the market participants, they are using the point and figure. So sometimes when we look into a technical analysis, we want to use something that is popular, that everybody look at it, everybody use it. Because when everybody use it and then when it is popular, then only everybody will act on it. Okay, so that's how accurate it is. Mm, EMA, exponential moving average is good. Okay, exponential moving average is good. Um, it's good for technology stock and fast moving stock. So for example, if let's say you are um, looking at the US stock uh, market, perhaps you can use the EMA as well. Okay, so EMA and SMA, they are very, very similar. If you can draw these two lines, not much different. So it's your personal preference. Mm, crypto. Okay, what about crypto? <laughs> and then uh, Amil, uh, psychology side, MA um, famous more than EMA. Yeah, I would think that simple moving average is more famous than the um, popular than the uh, exponential moving average because a lot of the chart, we see that the default, the default um, moving average line is a simple moving average line. So that's a default. So when you see that people are using that as a default, it has to be the most popular lines. Mm. Um, yeah, so yes, I explained can that question, SME and EMA. The difference will be the calculation, okay? Because uh, SMA use uh, um, average and then the EMA use another formula that put on more weight, more um, value to the recent price change or price action. Mm. Okay. Can repeat again the part earlier um, to mention three factors must not um ah oh, okay three secret is it the three secret repeat the three three factors and the three secrets of the um, trend line is it okay so what are my three secrets uh, can anybody type in the chat here what are my three three secrets of drawing the trend line anybody horizontal trend line yes Amil good moving average line yes can um, 20 day and uh, 200 day. And then um, Amil also correct, 45 degree trend line. Uh, absolutely right. So three things, horizontal support and resistance mm -hmm. and um, 20 day and the 200 day moving average line to guide you so that you can draw nicely. And then the 45 degree line, okay? Then mm, horizontal support and resistance line, yes. Okay, so here some um okay some of the takeaway here okay when i talk about this takeaway uh, i actually do um the summary of what we have learned today 
Key takeaways on the trend line analysis. Okay, two points is speculative, three points is confirmed. So when you draw the trend line, sometimes you can connect two points only. So two points is good enough, okay, it's minimum. However, if you can have three points that is more valid than the two points, because after all, the, 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 the price action touches three times on that line. So it is more valid than the two points. Okay, so this is number one. And then assessing the break. So when you look at the break, okay, the trend line break. So sometimes um, when do you know it is um, genuine or um, non, it's a fake one. Okay, sometimes when, when there is a trend line break, okay, let's say it break, okay. How do you know that this is a genuine? Sometimes you have a, a horizontal trend and then it break. Okay, so how do you know this one? It will not break further. How? Okay, anybody? How do you know when? Sometimes you see uh, this after it break, right? It reverses. Okay, what wow. three bar confirmation? Good. Okay, we need to have three bar confirmation. If it's a uh, uh, three days, it will be three days confirmation whether it can go back up. And then you look at the volume. Okay, good. We look at the volume, whether there is a lot of um, selling pressure or not. If there's no selling pressure, then you know that it is um, not uh, 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 a lot of selling there. And uh, two to three percent, yes. Okay, so another one, okay. Okay, for example, uh, okay, volume, yes, correct. Volume uh, to, um, to, to see whether there is a selling pressure. So for example, um, okay, see whether I see, Okay, I clear here. So you see that there is a double top here, right? So I draw a trend line here, a neckline here. Okay, let's say I draw a neckline here. So let's say you are looking at this situation. Let's say you are, um, you 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 are here. Okay, you you are here. Okay, so you you do not know what's going to happen. Okay, let's say you don't know. So when you see that the trend line breaks. Okay, how do you know that this is uh, valid? So number one, um, this bar breakdown. But here, I think it's not very clear. But here, the volume, you can see here, actually the volume is more than the volume here. But because of all these things blocking, okay, maybe I move here. Lah. Here, actually, you see the volume is lower. Okay lower and then but however when it is um, selling the volume pick up so that means there is a strong selling pressure and another way of looking at it is that you look at the candlestick the candlestick has a, a high huge um, bearish candlestick you see the bar is huge red color bar it's not a, a short um, bar it's a huge price action so that means with this huge price action and then followed by the volume spike it is a, a genuine break Okay, and the price will go down for some time. And in this case, the price didn't go until the price target. Usually when we look at it, the price target um, is um, the top here, and then the target will be around here. But it, it turned, okay, it didn't, and then it turned, okay. But anyway, there is a sell down here. Okay, then I show you another one. Okay, here, did we break? Okay, the tail break. Okay, never mind. I show you this one. Ah, okay. So here we see that. Can I see the volume bar? Um, it was actually blocked by this thing. Can't see the volume bar. However, when we look at this, okay. When we look at this, so when we zoom in and then we see the price action. So after you have seen that the price break, right? Supposedly, you see the volume also spike up. So that means this selling pressure is huge. However, you can see that um, after some time, these two days, the volume seems to reduce. So that means that this price action, is it strong or weak? This sell down, this price action, is it a strong one or a weak one? What do you think? Type in the chat. Yeah, it is rather weak. It is not as strong as we, we are looking at because this one is a multi-top chart pattern and then it violated. But when it violated, you see it is 
not very steep, but then it is like moving on a, like a sideways a little bit. It, it went a little bit sideways and then it went down, but then it's going on a sideways again. So this one is a, a weaker kind of a breakdown. So when you see this kind of a weaker breakdown, um, that's the volume bar color, yeah. The volume bar will coincide with the red color. You see red color coincide with the red color, green color coincide with the green color. So the green color means it's an up day, the red color is a down day. So you can see that that means that there is some support here. The selling pressure is not as bad. So let me show you, um, okay. Here is the US one, okay, SPY. So when you look at the SPY, uh, you see, you say that there's a mini double top. Uh, why I say mini? Because this double top is a very, very small chart pattern. Okay. However, it is a chart pattern, so it was violated. And then after it violated, right, you see that the, the, the bar is very, very huge. The selling pressure is huge. But the thing is that one day it reached the, the target already. Within days, it reached the target. So Technical analysis is something like this. So whenever it reach a target, it will reverse. Okay. So um, so in this case, the correction was rather short because um, it has reached a target very, very soon and then it reverses very, very soon. So there's a spike in the volume as well. Okay, RSI. Okay, good. So now let's take a look at the RSI. RSI. So here we are looking at um, incorporating the trend line together with the indicator, okay? Um, okay, so here we can draw trend line in the indicator as well. So for me personally, I like to use the RSI to draw trend line so that you can see whether there's any buying opportunity. So for example, you see that there is a breakout here. Okay, so um, I can draw like here. Okay, so I touch here, touch here, and then there's a breakout here. So when I use my cursor here, this breakout, right? Do you see that it is also a buying opportunity here? Okay, it is a buying opportunity there. And you can also draw another trend line break. So this trend line break coincide with this trend line break. So it is a buying opportunity. And then you can see that there is a reverse. Uh, this is a reverse, uh, it's a W, it's a double bottom. You see a double bottom here? Double bottom is also a chart pattern. So that means what? That means when we analyze the TA, right? Not necessarily we just focus on the price, not necessarily. So we are actually looking at the indicator and then we are looking at the um, chart pattern in the indicator and as well as the trend line in the indicator. So we are looking at both. So that to double confirm, you see, I can draw another trend line here. Okay, and this trend line also coincide with this. And uh, I see a, a head and shoulder, reverse head and shoulder here. And I can also draw a trend line here, coincide, okay. Mm, I use 14. Yeah, I use 14, that's a default one. Yeah, I use the 14. Yes, I use the default. Mm, okay, can trend line be can trend line be drawn on the record chart? Yes, you can. However, um, as I said, you have to choose a popular chart. So if let's say a popular indicator, record is not a popular indicator. Okay, the name sounds very big, but is it a popular indicator? <laughs> Okay, so so if trend line of the price action and the trend line of the RSI are parallel, it's um good. Okay, so actually, okay, Faiz, no. Okay, Faiz, um the 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 maybe I can have another session on this um another webinar session on the the um divergence when we talk about the indicator, the technical indicator, and the price divergence because. When we are looking at the technical indicator, such as the oscillator, for example, this RSI, we are looking at the price and the indicator divergence, whether there is a divergence or not. And then that can also be a, a buy opportunity. So perhaps that will be on another uh, 
session, okay? Because uh, not enough time. Um, yeah. Uh, is uh, oh okay. Individual stock uh, later. Uh, we we just cover our our this one first. Okay. Here we are looking at um another takeaway. Key takeaway is that um the the trend line should fewer acceleration so this is just now what i mentioned fewer acceleration so once it break the trend line you must see the bar is a big bearish bar and then the volume also take a a, a rise so that means there is a, a acceleration so when there is acceleration then it will drive the price down further okay if let's say after the trend line break let's say this is a double top however after the trend line break the price action is a very, very small price action. And not many people are selling. People are somehow is like supporting it. Then you can see that very soon it will be reversing. Okay, so that is how you can look at the price action when it react, when it break. How does it react? How does the market participant react? That's the most important thing. And they will react to the price action and the volume. Okay break out and pull back. So whenever you see that you have a uptrend and then break down, then the pullback, uh, this pullback will confirm everything. If you can go back up, congratulations, you are back on track. However, if you go down again, that means it's a confirmation that you are in the beginning of a downtrend because you are having a lower low and a lower high and a lower low. So when you see a lower high and a lower low, you are in a downtrend. Okay, like this, you break with a, a big, big bearish candlestick. Okay, so this accelerated it, and then you rebound, pull back. The rebound is a temporary rally. It, it cannot touch the, 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 the trend line here. Then it reverses, and this accelerate further. You see, each of these bars are very, very huge negative bar. So then you have a lot of selling pressure, huge bar, okay? So, and the, the bigger the bar, right? It, it's more um, acceleration, more powerful. That means more, more um, impact, more momentum, okay? Okay, so then the case study, go back to my screen there, okay? So if you want me to look at the your chart then i can also look at your chart so basically what we have learned today is that we have learned about trend lines in three scenarios whether you are on an uptrend or you are downtrend or you are horizontal trend okay how do i know it is an uptrend i use my 200 day moving average line you see I can see that I'm on the uptrend. How do I know when, when I'm on the downtrend here? Okay, I look at the 200 day moving average line and it is a downtrend. So even when you are in the downtrend here with the right trend line, you can still make money. And then this downtrend line, I can use my 20 day moving average line and see whether it coincide well, and then I see that, oh, I'm coincide well, and I'm drawing quite accurately, okay? So here, I can also draw one downtrend line like this, so that I can show you that using the moving average line together with the trend line, I can draw a better trend line, a nicer trend line, and a more accurate trend line, okay? Okay, so um, I think, I can answer your question now. Okay, let's see. Uh. I start with the Q&A first. Lah. Um, okay, so Edwin, can we draw the trend line on the indicator? Yes, I answer you already. And which is better, draw trend line with, a, with or without a wig? Um, it depends. Just now I also answered that already. Um, any way to identify fake breakout using a trend line? Yeah, so the confirmation rules, okay? So the confirmation rules will, will answer everything. Do you consider the fundamental uh, example, the economy data and earnings when confirming the trend line break 
um, form uh, trend line. Okay, so um, Chu, you are asking whether when I look at the trend line break, do I need to refer back to the fundamental news or not? Mm, okay, good question. So usually I do. <laughs> for example, uh, for example, um, cryptocurrency recently the Bitcoin crash, right? Um, this uh, I show you the BTC uh, USD. Recently, the the Bitcoin you can see that there is a double top here, and then um, this is the neckline, and then we can actually draw straight away. We can draw like this. We can draw like this, and then we can draw like this. So this, this is a target, okay? So we are looking at the target like that. So when um, I'm looking at this um, trend line break, and then um, I was looking up, because a lot of people ask me, what happened, what happened? Um, shall I hold a, a Bitcoin, shall I sell, shall I buy? <sighs> Everybody asked me that. So then I have to keep on, um, besides looking at the chart, I have to look at the fundamental, what? Is the fundamental so for this particular the fundamental for this drop was because the US federal they say they want to tapering the cryptocurrency tapering they didn't say how they're going to do that they just say they're going to tapering so just the word tapering itself already get nervous the market participant get nervous and then they sell so now the question is how are they going to do that? How, what kind of rules they're going to set? What will happen? Will, will, will we see the cryptocurrency will be gone forever or will, will it be like some rules, some minor rules uh, in place just to safeguard the, 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 the investors? Okay, so, so all this we, we do not know. Okay, so what I can see is that the fundamental news is still, um, there is some negative news there, but then we do not know what's going to happen yet. So at the moment, from the technical analysis, I can see that this level here is supported. Okay, and um, if this level is supported, I I would like to see that it should be going higher. Okay, if no more bad news, unless what happened, unless this break, that if it break, then the next supporting trend line, you see, there's a, a lower low here, right? So then this will be the le next level that we should be looking at, okay? So technical analysis is all about support and resistance. So every time when you see that this one cannot be supported, then the other one will be the support. So if this one supported, then it will slowly go higher. So it's everything is about support and resistance. You just have to like a competition like that. You have to keep on um, achieving the hurdle. After you achieve this hurdle, you achieve another hurdle, you achieve another hurdle, you climb, you climb higher and higher so that you, you have to break the resistance all the way. Okay. Mm. Does the Heikin Ashi chart help in drawing the trend line? Um, yes, you can try. Okay, you can try using the Heikin Ashin because this one is a candlestick. So you can see whether it is helpful. Some people, they feedback to me, they find that it is more helpful. Okay, so it's your preference. And um, okay, um, consider, okay, let's see. Um, I hope I answer everybody question. <laughs> well, one person asked about the um, Hashtag P S T E C. Okay. Uh, obviously, I have um, some lines here. That means I have been looking at this as well. So here I have already drawn my trend line here. Okay, so already drawn. So here the this line it is at the it had a breakout and then but very soon it re reversed. So maybe next I want to draw is my 20 day moving average line. So I see that it is below. And then my 200 day moving average line, it is also below. So that means it is still bearish. So you can't do anything except you break. But when you break, you break three lines. Okay, so if you break this, this here, this level, this price level is, um, I think this one is a 1.065. So if you break that 1.065, you break three lines, 20 day, 200 day, and the 45 degree trend line. 
Okay. Mm, okay, Chin. Yes, bye. <laughs> SK Press. Okay. Okay, for this one, because it is a, a chart pattern here, and then this is a, a, the neckline. This is a horizontal neckline that you are seeing. Okay, so uh, actually I can move this lower. This one is the neckline. However, there is a lot of price action in here, a lot of price action here, here around here, a lot of price action. So you are actually below all this um, trend line, 20 day, 200 day, and uh, trend line you are in a, in a bad trend. So what you need to see is that whether you can be supported or not. Okay, so uh, when I look at it, the current situation is that you are um, still, you know, not in a good shape, definitely not in a good shape because you see such a big price action here. You have such a long tail here. Whenever I see such a significant long tail, I will, I will avoid the, this, I will avoid this share already. Okay, because of such a long tail. Um, technical analysis is something like this. You have to see what is obvious. You trade the obvious. Obvious to you will be obvious to any other market participant. So when everybody say the, see the same thing, they will avoid as well. Such a long tail. Okay. Um, there are always three to four points and then a resistance trend line. Um, well, when you are looking at a, a significant move, there are always um, points touching them. That means that trend line, the more the number of times it touches the trend line, it means that that trend line is significant. And then when it breaks, it will be, you know, um, because you just imagine psychologically. Every time when the Maybank hit the eight ringgit, it will rebound. Every time it hit the eight ringgit, it will rebound. Then one day it no longer, it no longer support by eight ringgit. It break that eight ringgit, go to seven eighty. So if you if you already hold this share, wouldn't you feel scared and nervous? And then you also want to sell. So psychologically, lah. So every time when it is always supported, you are safe. You feel safe, and then you hold on to it. But once you find that it is no longer supported, then you feel scared, and then you still also want to sell. Okay. Bum mm, and bum. Yeah, Jason, bump and dump. <laughs> All right. When you see a long tail shooting star, bump and dump. Okay. Um, oh yeah, so many. Yeah. Well, MACD helps in making better decision. Ah, okay. Fabian, I um MACD for me is another moving average. Okay, so I already have uh, my two moving average line in the chart, so I don't need another moving average. So I, I wouldn't want to bring in my MACD. So I would just have a uh, uh, very simple chart with the RSI and some 20 day, 200 day moving average and then chart pattern and the trend line. That's it, that's all. That's all you need. Okay. Mm. Is TradingView a good platform? So far I'm using TradingView because it has 20 over years of, uh, it can up to 20 years, 1980s. Okay, so it's a long history of a chart that you can see. Mm. Um, can you comment why DNEX have a long time? This one I also observe the DNEX. That's a that's a market participant. Market participant react like that. I also cannot cannot uh, answer. Okay, so sometimes the the breakout is failed is because of the the way people they react to it. Mm, can comment on the down and the Nasdaq. They are reversing down and the Nasdaq are reversing. So now I can see that the European market is also um, closing the gap because um, a few weeks ago, we saw the major European market like the Germany and the CAC 40 DAX all gap down. So now I look at the chart again, they are closing the gap like CAC 40 already closed the gap. And then the, um, the DAX uh, almost closing the gap. So very soon we are looking at a recovery again. Can I take a look at the... Um, M tell, is it M? Eh? M tell, okay. M tell. 
Ah, uh, yeah, this chart gone gone already. You see, you crash already. Avoid, avoid this because you you already crash. You see, so yeah. Mm. <laughs> I think times is up. Also, um, I have to pass back to Shaz. Shaz, are you there? Yes, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. I hope uh, I have answered most of the uh, groups that have to look at the industry because the industry itself, they are, they are up because of the COVID, but now COVID is going to be on gone. So the industry is uh, out of favor. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, Ms. Pauline Yong for sharing yeah, sessions. So guiding us through the stock market. And give mm -hmm. us uh eh, and then give us the you know how to you know draw the trend lines. So mm -hmm. for the of uh we have already reached the end of our webinar once again. Thank Miss Pauline for today's sharing session. So and thank you to all participants for joining us today. Mm, thank you so much, and I hope everyone um learned something today and uh, can apply yeah. straight away. Okay, Good night. thank you. Good, Good night. night, everyone. Bye bye.